happening on this first weekend of college football on Labor Day weekend. And we are underway as Gavin Bick Beckley kicks it deep and through the end zone. He does have the wind at his back, and that one goes for a touchback. yards. You'll see a two-headed monster there in the backfield with Josh McCown and Daleon Ward. But this time, the Lumberjacks going to the air, and it's juggled and caught by the leading receiver, Xavier Gibson. Did a nice play action. Self waited just perfectly to let that corner route develop in a great acrobatic catch there on the sideline. To Say no gain on the last play, so it's second and ten. A quick swing out pass, and it's caught by Q Borders, and Borders is into the red zone for the Lumberjacks. Another quick pass to the outside, and it's caught by Reichel, and Reichel is in for the touchdown, and just like that, he slides safely after the score. Evan Hardison. Artisan to pass again, and a little bit low, but looks like it'll be ruled incomplete. That brings up a third and six. Cooper, the motion man at the top. Artisan looking to deep to the sideline, and the pass is a little bit overthrown, but that's because of what you see on the field now, a flag. For the jersey was being pulled, and it looks like this will go for pass interference. Play action. A wide open receiver is cowing and cowing, cuts inside and tripped up just across the five yard line. Artisan to pass on third and goal, going to the corner, and the pass is incomplete, overthrown. It was an all conference USA honorable mention kicker a year ago. And punches this one through. Right back to Ward. A little stutter step and another nice run from Ward. And that'll be enough for a first down gain of six on the play. And it's now transferred here to Stephen F. Austin. Trey Self going to the air. Throws it deep and it's incomplete. A little bit underthrown and that may have been to the benefit of the Lumberjacks as he was looking once again for Gibson. Gibson worked his way back into the pass and draws the flag. And it's first and ten from the 42. Another play action. Self with some time now going to scramble and he's got some room gets to the outside across midfield and up near the 45 yard line of the Miners another first down for Trey Self. Co transfers for the Miners this year switching to the 4-3 defense. Uh, Self lobs one over the middle and it's caught on the deflection enough for the first down tough break for the Miners as the whistle. Third and ten the crowd the loudest it's been tonight. Quick pass out is caught and Reaching near the goal line, just short it looks like. Jeremiah Miller and made the tackle to keep the Jacks out of the end zone for now, but first in goal from the one. And the handoff goes to Ward, and Ward is in easily for the touchdown. Touchdown, Lumberjack. And Stephen F. Austin makes it 13 to three. Brings up second and 10, hardest in to throw again. Going for a cowing again, and cowing makes the catch. Tipped it to himself as he was falling back. He did five times as the Miners get near midfield. Artisan flushed out on first down. Goes to his running back, Josh Fields, who makes the catch. And has enough for another Miners first down instead of trying a 52-yard field goal into the wind. It's Hardison back at quarterback. The quick pass out is complete to his favorite target tonight. Jacob Cowing. You can see this time they made a difference on their defense. On the inside receiver, they've got a guy up pressured to not give away that easy pass like they did last time. Artisan initially looks to the left and said comes back to his slot receiver, Don, who takes a big hit, but he holds on and has enough. They can continue to, to develop. They run it on third and short. And the spot will depend on the spot. It's very close. Find the end zone. Cowing is the motion man. It's Hardison back behind center. And he throws to the end zone and it's caught for the touchdown. Justin Garrett. The four point lead, just try and run this clock out. Throw it out to the outside and the ball is loose on the ground and it's scooped up by Justin Prince. And Prince has some room down the sideline and tackled just inside the five yard line. A huge play for the UTEP minor defense. Sets up the Miners first and goal at the five yard line. Trying to throw a wide receiver screen and UTEP was a little bit ready for it on this one I think. 
I don't know if they're going to consider that a fumbled ball or, if, or say that he even made a football move once he caught it. Ran their last play. And they snap it here again to Wadley and or to Hankins. And Hankins breaks the tackle and gets in for the touchdown. Touchdown! The first touchdown, Miner! collegiate touchdown for the Parkland grad, the local product. Carry against this Lumberjack defense so far. But they're going to go to the air on third and long. Hardison on the run again. He's got some space. We'll tuck it and sidestep his way out of bounds. Loss of eight brings up third and 19. We'll see how aggressive the Miners are. They are going to the air, and the pass is caught for a first down. It is Jacob Cowing again. So reception is a positive one. He'll eclipse the 100-yard mark, but back to the ground. And another tough run from Hankins, just bowling over defenders across the 30-yard line. Play for us later down the road. And it brings up a third and 10. Another quick pass to the slot. This time it's Justin Garrett. I think so, fourth and one. Fumble. The drop the snap, and it's not going to matter who recovers now. It's going to be a turnover. Well, it is a turnover on fourth and one. You hate to see the fact that you have a fumbled ball on an opportunity to pick up a first down. But you've also got to consider when you look at every other play that's been called by UTEP up to this point, and you get under center, you're not so ready to be able to take that snap. And then you could see if it was able to slow down on the replay, his hands clearly came apart as the snap was coming up. And itself, any time to be able to make a read. Here comes the pressure. Big and pressure. He gets the throw off. It's caught by McGowan somehow, but it's not going to go for a positive gain. A loss of five on the play, and it'll bring up fourth down. A loss of one on the last play, so it's third and six. Hardison completes the pass enough for the first down up across the 25-yard line. And runs a pretty base defense for the most part and don't line up too too differently a lot of times. And look here, big play offensively. I think that was our biggest run play of the game, whether it be for the Lumberjacks or for the Miners. But Same score we had at the half, 17-14. Big third down here for the Miners, taking the deep shot, and he overthrows Cowing, who was looking back, and now a late flag comes in. And early, didn't have an opportunity to see where the break of the receiver was going to happen, and the ball floated out of bounds. But defender seemed to be a little too tight in coverage. Another pass interference, a free 15 yards. After making that decision to stay here, play the slot and also see him in the kicking and punt returning game. And now third down, Hardison facing pressure, runs into it, runs out of it, gets the ball off, and it is picked off. Tabo Hendricks jumps in front of the pass, and it's the first collegiate interception for Gavin Hardison as he was on the run and in trouble the whole play. Well, that's the last thing you need to do is make a bad play worse. He had a great effort to be able to pull the ball down and try and get out of the pressure in UTEP defense. Yeah, watch the hard count too. No hard count. They're going for it on fourth and one. Self going to try with his own legs, and he gets to the sticks and just across the 30-yard line. The first here. He'll keep it on the ground with McGowan. He breaks the first tackle and now gets into the open field. Down the sideline and pushed out of bounds just shy of the 25-yard line. So not of eight, second and two. Self with time. Throws and it's incomplete, but there is a flag on the play. Jeremiah Miller had his hands up in the air. And it looks like this could be pass interference against the Miners. Another 15-yard penalty. Free first down. Self looking to the corner and the pass is underthrown and intercepted. Deron Law with the huge turnover for the Miners. Who does not agree with that flag not being thrown on that play. Miners go to the air on the very next play and what a catch by Justin Garrett. Trying to salt away as much of this clock as they can but going to the air again and the pass complete once again to Cowing and Cowing is into Lumberjack territory. Another late snap in the play clock. It's a give to Hankins who has some space. Hankins has a seam across the 20. Hankins inside the 10 yard line down to the 5. 76 yards in the touchdown. And now a Wildcat formation straight to Hankins, and Hankins easily in for the touchdown. Get there past you.
Self under duress at the goal line. It's going to be close. They're going to mark him just outside of the goal line. So no safety for the Miners, but they brought the pressure. Self throws from his own end zone, overthrows his receiver, and just like that, three and out for the Lumberjacks. Having the three timeouts that they would try and force the ball down the field and see what they could come up with, but UTEP able to capitalize and take the lead and hasn't looked back since that Hank happened. Hankins has some room up across the 10. Another good cut back and run from Dion Hankins. Another first down, and it may be all but over now for the Miners. Miners could take a knee and end the game here, but it looks like they also want to reward Hankins with a potential hat trick. It's blown up in the backfield, but that's because there was movement on the line. And Stephen F. Austin, maybe the only way you can stop Deion Hankins at this point is jump across the line of scrimmage well before the snap. Well, I think now once this penalty's called, I think the clock's just going to run out. I don't, I don't believe that we'll see another play from here. So looks like UTEP's going to close this one out as the first one of their season. A great start to 2020. I know it's exciting for a lot of these guys around here considering a couple weeks ago they were unsure if they were even going to have a football season. So to take advantage be able to start the season out exciting the way that they have. It's a good way to get 2020 started. Miners haven't won their opener in back-to-back -back seasons in nearly a decade. 2010 and 2011, and Trevor, I think you may remember one of those games. Well, I know 2010 I was there, that's <laughs> for sure. And that was an exciting start to my senior season. So it's crazy to think that, that was 10 years ago that I was playing. <laughs> time flies when you're having a good time. <laughs> there you that's, go. what they, that's what they say. And it looks like the Miners will play the side of sportsmanship here and not snap the ball again. They'll take the win, and it's final. 24-14, UTEP starts the season 1-0 after falling behind 14-3. The Miners score 21 unanswered points, and Dana Dimmel gets his third win as a UTEP Miner first of the season, and the Miners start the year 1-0.